And we're going to be joined in this segment by Patrick Henningsen, the Infowars.com reporter who's been covering the escalation of the race wars in America. He's got a feature story up on Infowars.com right now entitled Trayvon Martin, Disinformation, Fake Reporting, Fueling the Illusion of the American Race War. And now joining us in studio right here is one of the key researchers who's been digging into the details to give us a truthful view, not the typical mainstream, lamestream media spin, but the truthful reporting on this, none other than Aaron Dykes. Aaron, hey man, good hey, to have you on today. Thanks for bringing me in. Yeah. Well, you know, the real reporting's coming up with Patrick because he called sources. Uh, he's found out that they're most likely not going to be charging Zimmerman with first degree murder. Instead, his sources suggest they're going to go after that stand your ground thing in Florida uh -huh. and try to fight them on the gun rights thing overall. But meanwhile, they've been spinning this racial war thing and trying to pump it up. And uh, he's got mainstream reports where they reported neo-Nazis marching and trying to stir things up, only it didn't happen. It didn't happen. But the media went with it anyway. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. I saw this in the mainstream media too. The neo-Nazis marching through the town with their guns. I saw pictures on the mainstream media with all their, all their military looking gear. You're saying that didn't happen. Well, that's what Patrick Henningsen's reporting. He's got all the details, okay. but it, it came out in a Miami blog or a Florida blog, only it was a total misreport. He called the police station locally, found out this was not going on according to their reports, and so it appears to be yet another hyped up thing just to stir it up in the media. All right, so we do have Patrick Henningsen joining us by Skype video. We're going to go to you, Patrick, in just a second. I know you're standing by to give us the uh, the breakdown of that story. Anything, anything else that's crucial to give us the context for the story, Aaron. Yeah, let me give you some background, not on the Zimmerman and Trayvon case, but on stirring up racial hatred in general in the Orlando area, the same area where this case is going on. Back in 2006, there was a neo-Nazi group led by a guy named David Gletty. He deliberately marched through the black community and tried to stir up hatred uh, with his little clownish neo-Nazi uniforms and the flags and whatever else. I believe it was less than a dozen of them marched. They were protected by the police. The only problem is it came out a year later. He was 100% an FBI informant <laughs> uh, just trying to stir up hatred. And you know groups like the SPLC are not going to be far behind. And it's interesting that a lot of the neo-Nazis continued to defend this guy, David Gletty, who was outed in the Orlando Sentinel back in February 15, 2007. And so there they are, all you know, for years trying to stir this stuff up, trying to punch the buttons. And unfortunately, people have a tendency to fall for it. They really shouldn't. They want to divide us to keep the attention away from the oligarchy, all the looting going on in the country, and divide us amongst ourselves on these issues. Yes. That I think we're outgrowing as a country. No, you hit it with the phrase punching our buttons. They know that there are emotional buttons that can be punched relentlessly across the American population that are going to lead to a rise in hatred and violence. Now, let, let's go ahead and go to Patrick Henningsen, who I believe is, has joined us by Skype video. Is Patrick with us on Skype? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, man? awesome. Yeah, Patrick, I can, I can hear you. Go ahead, man. Uh, what, what would you like to lead in with on this story? Well, firstly, uh, I'll preface this story with saying that uh, I was able to get access to some people. I won't name it who the person is, but let's just say they are a judge in the Sanford court system, Central, court, uh, Central Florida court system. Uh, the reason is because uh, as a child, I lived uh, very close to Sanford and my mother worked uh, in downtown Sanford for a number of years. So we still have some, some links there. So I just had to go into my little black book. Um, it's amazing that the, uh, if you, you, you look at the whole spectrum of, of uh, guessing and uh, not saying much, which the mainstream media are very good at, which is making headlines that don't actually declare something, um, we've gone out. Uh, here and just made a few basic inquiries and were able to actually report something that is really going on amidst all the hype and all the race baiting and everything else which the media seems content to go into. So let's, but, uh, yeah, uh, Patrick, very quickly, just an overview for, for those who really want to understand the context here. Who benefits from the escalation of the race war? Can you name who are the key beneficiaries in, in, in the power structure who want this to happen? Okay, well, the, the, the story about neo-Nazis, uh, armed neo-Nazis uh, running patrols in Sanford, Florida, was synchronized uh, magically on the Southern Poverty Law Center's website at the same time it appeared in the article in the Miami New Times, okay? We've dispelled this as a 
piece of fake news, nonetheless, the, 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 the liberal uh, leaning uh, blogs and so forth ran with it. Now, Florida has got a reputation of being, uh, especially Central Florida, Stanford in particular, as one of the best examples of racial harmony in the state of Florida, believe it or not. And this, this is from long-term Florida residents who, who have uh, served public office there, who have spoken to doctors, lawyers, and so forth. Now, uh, the, the, what we have in the media is we have political opportunists who are looking for some cheap political mileage out of uh, a, a racial divide, white versus black, rich versus poor, uh, and so forth. And then you have members of the media who are basically addicted to crisis opportunity. And you can say the same thing about politicians. I'm not, talk I'm not just talking about Al Sharpton and some of these reactionary, uh, foundation-funded, unemployable uh, talking heads, uh, of which uh, the comments made by President Obama a few weeks ago, where he said, uh, if I had a son, sure. uh, he, he looked like Trayvon Martin. That is basically along the same lines as what Al Sharpton's doing by having marches down there. The Southern Poverty Law Center, believe it or not, Mike, I called them directly. I spoke to the director, Mark Potak, and we had a little discussion about what was going on there. I asked about the neo-Nazis. He, he gave me their laundry list of events going back to Jasper, Texas with the James Byrd lynching in 98 and then Toledo, Ohio, named all the names. And I said, well, what about the new Black Panther movement? I said, what about these guys? They're calling for a dead or alive bounty on the head of George Zimmerman uh, and also calling for a race war on uh, Tampa Radio, which Kurt Nimmo chronicled very much in detail in his article yesterday. I said, what about this? I said, what about hate speech? This is a quote from the Southern Poverty Law Center. And I wish Alex Jones was here. He'd be jumping out of his chair. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. Um, the, the, Mark Potak said to me, there's no such thing as hate speech. What? <laughs> there's what? no such thing as hate speech. Uh, wait a minute. He means there's no such thing as hate speech when it comes out of their mouths. But when anybody else is saying something, then they claim that's hate speech, right? So total contradiction, just as usual. That's what we keep hearing in this. Well, according to Mark, uh, he said it's only uh, hate speech if there's uh, incitement or there is a what's legally termed as a true threat. But in they are words, inciting. They are, they're openly inciting violence. So, so and I, I went around in circles with him on this point. And, uh, you know, what can I say? Um, uh, and, and they're one of the biggest uh, attack dogs on the left as far as uh, anti-Semitic this or calling for uh, censorship of uh, domestic patriot groups and so forth. The Southern Poverty Law Center, and I won't even get into the Oklahoma City bombing Elohim City incident. Alex Jones can, can really sink his teeth into that tomorrow. But um, so, so the, the beneficiaries are people who um, have short-term uh, gains to make out of dividing society into its respective parts. I'm working on another longer feature, which I hope to have finished later today, but definitely by tomorrow morning, which is entitled, We Don't Need Another Race War in America. And, yeah. what, it's, and, and what, it, what I'm saying, Mike, and you can comment on this, is this race war is a short-term warm-up phase for what's coming next, which is a class war and that has already been seeded by the occupy movement by using terms like one percent and 99 percent and also the black panther movement they're saying they want to get rid of capitalism the new socialist neo-nazi movement they want to get rid of capitalism it reminds me of the climate change conference in copenhagen when i went and reported for Infowars, where you had the foundation funded hippies outside wanting to break into the conference to ruin the meeting of all the collectivist corporate collectivists inside they're collectivists on both sides you're on to something huge here patrick very good analysis as usual so folks look for that article tomorrow on infowars.com or maybe even later today i want to go to aaron here and ask aaron to comment on these contradictions that Patrick just pointed out, we've got this contradiction where, where uh, according to his conversation with Southern uh, Law Poverty Center, um, there is no hate speech. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, they do nothing but label patriot groups who have not exhibited any hate speech as hate speech groups. And then when you've got someone in a recording openly just calling for a sea of blood, 
That is somehow not hate speech. <laughs> yeah. The larger <laughs> system is what gets me. You ask who would benefit from this. Look at the way groups that George Soros handles have brought about the Arab Spring. They also brought about the action in Africa uh, that we saw with the Coney 2012 thing. They have the groups poised to benefit from that. You've got a, a number of oligarchical benefactors to the Occupy Wall Street. Why? Because they want this larger world government system built on the idea of social justice, of uh, of a way to get justice for groups that are not represented. But when you go back for decades, for instance, if you read Webster Tarpley's Obama unauthorized biography, you see how he's a product of a number of extremist groups who are, again, trying to punch these buttons. And in many cases, it goes back to what the Ford Foundation was trying to do, giving grants specifically to radical groups, denying grants to more mainstream groups, groups that at least are not seeking violence. Right. And you got people like McGeorge Bundy, the Skull and Bones acolyte, pushing these programs through uh, big money foundations like the Ford Foundation. Well, it's incredible. When they do it, it's okay, right? But when somebody else tries to actually de-escalate and speak out for basic justice, basic liberty, basic common law in America, they're labeled uh, sovereign citizens, which is now being equated with terrorism. It, 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 common sense has been thrown out the window, and just the basic facts have been thrown out the window. For example, Zimmerman, he's not white. I mean, <laughs> he's not a white guy. He's, but they want he's, to start a race war where the average white person's a honky, but the elitist at Skull and Bones who are steering the whole mechanism, they're not a honky, you know. We got to go to break, Aaron. Not use the term, but. I know, I know, no, you're, you're using okay, it, you're paraphrasing it. Get along. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Patrick. We'll be right back. Stay with us on the Alex Jones Show. A lot more straight ahead. Stay with us. We're continuing our interview with Patrick Henningston, the InfoWars.com reporter. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in for Alex today, in case you were wondering. This just in, Santorum suspends GOP presidential campaign. So, Rick Santorum is out of the race, leave, uh, clearing the path for Mitt Romney to become the nominee. Yeah, after they stole it from Ron Paul. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest about it. As long as we're telling the truth, you know, uh, Zimmerman isn't white. And they stole the election from Ron Paul. There you go, for the record. But continuing with Patrick Henningsen, we are talking about the escalation of the race war in America. Who benefits from that escalation and why we must resist it? Because remember, our buttons are being pushed, all of us. Uh, white people, black people, brown people, every, no matter what your race or color, the the global elite is messing with your head. If you feel angry about this whole situation, you have been manipulated. So you have to resist that, chill out, calm down, and realize that it's all about us working together as people to resist tyranny and not allowing that tyranny to make us fight against each other. Patrick, uh, like to have your thoughts on that topic, yeah, actually. Yeah, Mike, I just want to point out that before this whole Trayvon Martin shooting uh, media circus began, you know, things like the neo-Nazi or the white supremacist movement was it's, it was just about dead and buried. You know, it was on a life support system. And what the uh, left-leaning media and the Al Sharptons and the Barack Obama and the Jeremiah Wrights of the world have done is they've resuscitated the white supremacist movement and somehow made it kind of sexy for the lowest common denominator of society. Likewise, the new Black Panther movement has no appeal to, to, to really anybody in today's modern America. But sure enough, after this circus, they've now kind of risen up to have some people listening to them, and, and they are getting you know, some credence in, in very sort of dark and moldy circles. But you know, this is a typical uh, uh, kind of controlled uh, cutout, two sides of a cardboard cutout. You have the National Socialist Movement on one side, New Black Panthers on the other, and I will bet you the house that both of those movements have a uh, federal informant steering their uh, media operations and so forth. Oh, you bet. That, uh, right there in the t at the top of their organization. Yeah. And, if any, and any Americans learn one thing from this is to understand that point. You You're know, exactly right. This is racial escalation theater. I'm not talking about the shooting itself. That was obviously a real event. The shooting did take place. But everything that surrounds that, the context that they're building around it, the escalation, the, 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 the words that they're putting out there, the poison in the minds of the people, this is racial escalation theater taking place. Is there any other evidence, Patrick, that there are FBI informants or other sort of controllers that are steering groups, that specific details that you know of right now? 
Um, I can't I can't say for certain, but I, all I can do is I can look at history and I can read these reports about the the weather the weather underground. I mean, it's quite likely, and a lot of people don't, don't talk about this, but Bill Ayers. Uh, if you look at his M.O. and you look at the M.O. of the weather, the weather underground, Bill Ayers is anything but a radical leftist. Bill Ayers looks to me like he was a career federal informant because otherwise he'd be in a federal penitentiary right now doing back-to-back -back life sentences. So let, let's, let's get real. And most of these sort of radical guys who are allowed to be big media personalities are uh, federal under, protected under the federal informant uh, cloak so to speak. But, you know, there's another more disturbing trend, okay, and this is a foundation-funded thing. On PBS, I watched a show called Finding Your Roots, and there was a black professor with a white and a black classroom, and they were talking about the founding fathers, and they were basically focusing on the fact that George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and these guys were slave owners. And then they were—they're were going to the black students and saying, well, "What do you think about this?" And the black students were saying, "Well, that—that—that that, that, that means they're part of the problem, you know." And we thought the Constitution was this and the Constitution was that. But these are children being manipulated by uh, academics and foundation-funded older people to make them say, "Throw out the Constitution." throw out the law of the land. And that's something that this federal government and, and the one before it under George W. Bush, make no mistake, has been working to minimize the influence of the Constitution within the greater society of the United States that's, and apply, applying to laws. What's astonishing to this, uh, to me in all this, Patrick, is that they have taken this one event, which is tragic, of course, as any loss of life is tragic, but in the bigger context, it is tiny compared to the number of lives lost every single day by just prescription drugs, for example, or, or soldiers committing suicide because they're on psychiatric drugs. Or taser, or taser guns. Yeah, right. So With it's police. all out of context. They, they don't have the priorities straight about what's really killing Americans. We're all the victims of a police state, every one of us. Absolutely. Patrick, I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, really great talking with you here. And folks, watch for Patrick Henningsen's articles on InfoWars.com. We'll be right back with a lot more here on The Alex Jones Show. Stay with us. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.